Another way to control the amount of data to be printed on a page, besides changing your page orientation or margins, are inserting page breaks. And to insert, remove, or even edit them, come up here and click on the View tab, go to the Workbook Views group, and it's right there. Page Break Preview. You can see when I hover over it in the pop-up, it says it'll show where the page breaks will appear when our document is printed. Let's go ahead and click on it, and we're in that different view. Now, anytime you see a blue dashed line, that's a page break. And we got a vertical page break here in between columns G and H because it couldn't squeeze H and I, the data there, over into this section, which is page one, meaning that it's going to be printed on page one. And so what it does is it addresses the columns that it can't fit onto page one and cuts off those columns that it can't and addresses it later. So onto page one, columns A through G, all the rows that it can fit on page one, and then it goes over what it can't fit onto page two, addressing the same columns A through G. When it's done addressing all those rows, and if I had more rows where it went to page 3, 4, 5, and 6, then after it addressed it all those rows for those columns, it would take a look at those columns that were cut off and come back over here to the right. And I don't know if you can see the watermark. It's smaller because the area is smaller, but that's page 3, and down here is page 4. Now, to be able to adjust the page breaks around, like for example, I got a page break here that maybe I want to be able to have more space at the bottom of page one so I can move the page break up and have those records to be at the top of page two. I know you can adjust the margins, but you can also do it with page breaks, or maybe you just want to do it for one particular record like Lance Boyle. Maybe you don't want that record at the bottom of page one, but it's got to be at the top of page two. Go ahead and hover over that page break until you can see arrows pointing up and down. Of course, if it's a vertical page break, left and right. So go ahead and hover over it and click and drag it and push it up. And a couple things happen. Well, first of all, Lance Boyle is no longer in the page one section, but in page two, so he'll be printed at the top of page two. Second of all, that when you edit a page break, a default page break by Excel, the blue dash line, it converts it into a solid blue line. So that way you can know what the defaults were as opposed to those that you edited, or I'll show you later on, those that you insert. Anytime you insert a page break or edit one, it'll change it to a solid blue line. And you'll see that in the normal view that we'll go over in just a minute. But for right now, we have adjusted it. Let's go ahead and check to see if Lance Boyle is at the top of page two as opposed to the bottom of page one. So let's go to the File tab, go backstage down to Print. Come over here, scroll down to the bottom. OK, Lance Boyle's not at the bottom of page one. Oh, it's tiny text here, but let's go ahead and go to page two. And then I'll come over here and click on the Zoom to Page and scroll to the top so we can see it larger, and there we go. Lance Boyle is at the top of page two. Cool. Let's go ahead and go back. And let's say instead of just moving page breaks around, what would happen if I removed one entirely? Well, for example, let's say that I don't want columns H and I to be cut off. How about if I go ahead and hover over the vertical page break till I can see arrows pointing back and forth and click and drag that all the way off? Congratulations, we got rid of that page break. However, there's a give and take. In order to do that, we have to give up something. And what are we giving up? Well, you can find out by coming up here, clicking on the Page Layout tab, going to the Scale to Fit group, and it's right there, the size of your font. Instead of being 100%, we're down to 81% of normal, so the font has shrunk. It's tinier to be able to squeeze column H and I, the data they're in, onto page one, and then also onto page two. Now, another way to remove a page break, instead of just clicking and dragging, which you can do to both your own edited solid blue line page breaks and also the dash blue line page breaks, the default by Excel, by clicking and dragging. I don't know about you, but if I have to drag a page break off and I'm on row 25,000 and I gotta go either all the way up 25,000 rows or down, that's not doing it for me. So instead, to remove this page break, you can click below it or if it's a vertical page break, click to the right of it. That is, if it was right here between E and F, but we're going to do below. And then come up here on the Page Layout tab to the Page Setup group and click on Breaks and remove it. It removes it, but it can't remove it entirely just as much as it can to have it scaled at 81%, the size of the normal size of font. So if we're really stubborn, we're like, no, it's got to be totally gone because I want everything to be able to fit onto one page. Remember, it's a give and take. If I get rid of that page break so I don't have any, then that scale is going to decrease. It's going to be a smaller font. And so how do I get rid of it? Well, you can click and drag to remove it. You cannot click below it and come up here and click on breaks to remove it because it's just not going to work. You have to do a forced removal by hovering over it, clicking and dragging it off. 
and then there's the take or we had to give up larger font size to a smaller 70 percent so how's that going to look let's go ahead and click on the file tab go backstage down to print to our print preview and okay it's zoomed in because if i click on zoom to page it zooms out and that's even worse so let's go ahead and click on zoom in what you see here is what's going to come out of your printer that size cool now if you want to go ahead and adjust it here because you're like no 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 I don't want 70%, I want to go back to 100%. You can scroll down to the bottom. You have custom scaling that you can click on. So you've got the defaults here if you want to fit it on one sheet, which we've already done. We have no page breaks. You can fit all columns on one page, fit all rows on one page. And then we got our custom scaling, and then we got custom scaling options, which brings up the page setup window, which coincidentally close out. You can click on the link below it, page setup brings up the same window. So then you've got the scaling, which you can see it's 70% of normal size. You can make that adjustment here without going back to the page break preview by typing in 100%, hitting enter. But then we go from one page, everything being crammed onto one page at a smaller font size to four pages to fit the larger size font. So when I click on the back arrow, we're back to our default page breaks, the horizontal and the vertical. Now at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I definitely got to have columns H and I on there so I can change the page orientation from portrait to landscape. It removes the vertical page break, and then I've got just two pages. Cool. When I do that, I lose more space vertically and gain more horizontally, and I'm okay with that because I gotta have those columns there. Now, having said that, if I wanna be able to break this up a bit more, so let's see, we got two pages. I can hover over that page break, click and drag that up, and I want to insert another page break so I have so many records per page that are going to be printed per page. In order to insert a break, know that whatever cell you have selected is going to insert a break above it and to the left of it. So if I come up here, I'm in cell D43 and click on breaks. To insert, it inserted a vertical and a horizontal, remember, to the left and above it. Well, what if I don't want a vertical break? I just want a horizontal. Well, if you insert it, you can always click and drag and, you know, remove the vertical break. Let's go ahead and hit undo a couple of times. The way to get around that initially is to go over into the first column. So when I insert a break here, it'll insert above it. So I'll get my horizontal, but vertical to the left of it, there's nothing to the left of it. So it won't insert a vertical break. So come up here, click on breaks to insert only a horizontal as well as when I, let me scroll up here, and I want to insert a vertical break, like let's say between columns G and H. Okay, well right here I've got this merge cell. Will it allow me to do that? Because if I go ahead with this merge cell that takes up from column A over to I in row one, where is it going to insert it? So what we have to do is have to unmerge it, because I don't want to, you know, insert a break below that because that defeats the purpose because it inserts a break above it and to the left of it and I just want a vertical break not one above it that has a horizontal right at Dreamforce so it's on a page by itself that's not working so let's go ahead and right click on that merge cell and in the mini formatting toolbar let's go ahead and deselect merge and center so it's no longer merged so we can go ahead and select column H the first row and come up here and click on break to insert break. So it inserts everything above it. There's no row above it. So there's no horizontal break, but everything to the left of it. And so there's our break in between G and H. So everything you see here, all the breaks are of me, either inserted or adjusted, all solid lines. If it was Excel, it would be a dash blue line. So when I change views and I come up here and click on the view tab and go to the normal view, that when I go to the normal view, I'll be able to see, albeit very faint, those page breaks. That's why when it comes to page breaks, I like viewing them and working them in here. But you can also view them in the normal view. If you've got a keen eye, you can see it, as well as inserting and removing those page breaks. You want to see? Okie dokie. Click on normal. And I don't know if you can see it, but we're in column H, or, well, H1, but you can see the left-hand side. That line is a little bit darker than those other lines. That's a page break. And scroll down and then there's a horizontal page break a solid line and those are my page breaks if it was a dash line as we saw in an earlier training video when we went to the print preview a dash line there that would be the default page break so to be able to insert page breaks here or remove them you just got to follow the same rules to remove it you either have to be the right hand side of a vertical page break or below a horizontal page break 
So to the right hand side, it doesn't matter if you can be in any row. Then just go ahead and click on the page layout tab. Go to the breaks and say you want to remove it and it disappears. Well, you may not be able to see all this, so in which case you could go back to the view tab to the page break preview and you can see it's gone. And vice versa, if I go back to the normal view and I say, oh no, I really want it there, just go back to the page layout tab and of course make sure that you're in the top row because we want to insert a vertical break and not a horizontal. So it inserts above and to the left, there's nothing above, so it won't insert a horizontal. We just need to click on breaks to insert break. It goes to the left hand side, and again, if you can't see it, then go back, view, the page break preview, and it's there, the vertical break. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.